Hey YouTube, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by. This is Matthew with the Counselors Guild, and today we'll be looking at burnout. Avoiding burnout, seven ways that you can extinguish the flames. All right, first, first slide we're gonna look at it is the symptoms of burnout. Now I think it's an infection, not like your typical infection, <laughs> uh, but, but like a mental infection in your mind that grows over time. It just doesn't come out of nowhere. Burnout builds on itself. It's something that grows and it spreads too to others. Um, so you wanna start, and it usually starts by some small occurrence, such as a grievance, a write-up, uh, coworkers are kind of cliquish and you know they're not letting you into their circle uh, and it kind of builds on itself and how we um, react to these grievances or write-ups you know we can overcompensate or we take on more work than we can possibly do we lo work longer hours we we try to um, um, like show those people that hey you know I'm, I'm cool enough uh, I can deal with this I can right the wrong that I got wrote up for or whatever they overcompensate you you may become hopeless you know I'm just no good at this uh, what's the point of even trying uh, and you just kind of give up um, depersonalization so that kind of that that happens when you when you stop putting your personal touch into things and you're just going through the motions uh, it's like you've cocooned your yourself and your body's just going through uh, uh, the, the job doing the doing what needs to be done okay um, and this will change the way that we view ourselves uh, our competencies and will the way we view the job uh, we kind of start following a negative path uh, another symptom is a fatigue mental and physical fatigue you got um, your energy is drained loss of concentration low productivity and low quality work Physical health, you know, prolonged stress, chronic stress, it will bring multiple physical health illnesses. Okay, which is, I, I think mainly it's heart disease, a lot of blood pressure, um, but also muscle, muscle, muscle aches and pains due to tension buildup. Uh, you may try to avoid work, use up all your sick vacation pay, go in late, leave early, um, increase phone use. Uh, just anything to avoid the, the, the job, okay? I remember having a seven minute window um, and people would come in seven minutes late and they leave seven minutes early, you know? Um, so that's, uh, I don't wanna say that's like a, you know, a major symptom of burnout, but I think it's, it's it, it shows that you're, you know, you wanna avoid uh, your time there. Uh, you become more pessimistic with accomplishing your goals, um, getting a raise, getting approved for vacation, everything is, oh, they're gonna say no, or I'm not gonna get it. They're not gonna, you know, do that for me. Everything's just negative, okay, pessimistic. Uh, and you become more cynical, okay. So one thing to avoid, or one thing that you can do to avoid burnout is do something every day to reach your goal, right? Begin with the end of mind, all right? So, what is your purpose for being in this position? You know, what, look down, look, look to, to your future, and what do you want this job to do for you, all right? What is your purpose uh, for being in this position? Is it getting you uh, to where you wanna be? If you said no to that, and I think sometimes we do get into jobs where it's not really part of our career, it doesn't have the things to do with our career, you know, Maybe we got laid off and I have to pick up a job at you know um, Costco in the meantime. That's fine. But what are you doing today, this week, this month to obtain a position that is related to your career goals? Uh, if you said yes, if you are in a job um, where, um, um, where it's getting you to where you need to be, think of what's your overall goal for working at this position, okay? Gain experience. Um, learn learn how to develop a crisis intervention skills or how to do a group or learn how to apply CBT techniques you know what is it doing for you okay. you want your job and I'm gonna say this later on to compliment you right? it's gonna be a win-win situation you know you still have to be productive and um, be an asset to the company but what are you getting out of it besides money okay, you want it to be more than money so what do you want to get out of it? What is good for you? 
what can I do today, this week, or this month to reach this goal? Okay. We're, we're, what we want with these goals is to um, grow. We want to improve ourselves. It's, it's something that's gonna help us in the long run. Okay, and setting SMART goals, uh, you wanna be specific, okay? Measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-oriented. So if you're uh, needing help with SMART goals, uh, Google it, but that's basically what it means. Be, uh, be specific. Don't be too general. Um, like, uh, I want to, um, I want to uh, uh, apply a cognitive therapy or, or I want to uh, reach 10 clients today, you know. Um, something like that you but you want to be able to achieve it attainable you want it to be something that i can do okay if you don't attain it if you don't achieve it it may lead to more i guess burnout um but also it can lead to more like hopelessness and giving up and not wanting to do it so you want to make sure it's something you can you, you definitely feel like you can do okay uh, be realistic and time oriented so the time would be like today like today i will get in touch with three clients uh, today I will, um, you know, whatever your job uh, is, you know, again, what do you want to do to grow? Right. Uh, you have to have another reason for going to work besides getting paid, right? If your, you know, reason is for getting paid, well, what are you doing with your money? Okay, are you investing it? Um, again, what are you doing with it? You know, set a goal. Uh, you, you, you work in there to save up for a house? Okay. Again, that you can start, you, you can set goals for that. If it's just to get paid, you know, have goals for your money. Number two, find meaning in what you do. Working towards goals will bring meaning. Be more aware and mindful of what you're doing. When, you're, when your movement is purposeful, purposeful uh, when, and, and you know, working towards goals and purpose, you become more aware and mindful. Uh, I want to learn this technique, so when I meet with my client, I'm going to do it. Okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going to practice it. Right? Instead of just going through your day. Uh, stop looking at your job task as work, but as opportunities for mastery. Align your values with your work. Internal values that help you grow into the person you want to be. Does your work satisfy your beliefs? Is what you're doing... Uh, relate to your values. That'll help. I know sometimes we get in jobs that doesn't really relate to our values, but um, what are you doing to find a job that can? Find purpose in what you do. There is reason for you to be there. Okay, and I underline you there because it's really, it's on you. If you don't like where you're at, if you don't like the people you're with uh, or around or you work with, um, that's not going to change. None of that's going to change. The only change is going to be from you. Okay. Your current position should be a vehicle to get to, uh, get to, get you to where you want to be. Okay. It, 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 unless you're there, unless you're, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm where I want to be. You know, I don't, I don't need to go any further. Well, where you, how do you make where you're at now? How do you make that better? Okay. Again, it's all about growing. You can stop growing when you retire or when you die. You know, uh, so, so always continue growing, working on goals, doing better and better and better. Okay. Number three, be aware, uh, be aware and deal with compassion fatigue. So compassion fatigue is, uh, there's a lot more information that I can fit on one slide. It's kind of a, it's probably something I could do a whole video on. But if you're interested in it, just go ahead and, and, and look for it on, on the internet. Uh, be sure you're, you're stopping at um, good websites, you know, um, like uh, anything that has an organ in it or uh, government. Uh, I don't know if, um, I think, yeah, just make sure you're stopping at, at good websites. Um, I can't remember where I, 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 I saw, but there are some sketchy websites out there on this. Um, it's similar to burnout. CF is a process that develops over time where your reservoir of compassion for others runs dry. That's common in the helping, uh, helping field. Therapists, daycare workers, um, doctors, nurses, um, physical therapists. 
you know, whoever, you know, any kind of uh, profession where you're helping people. And this will um, uh, work, uh, let's see, lack of caring, stop caring about people's problems, situations. Like, again, you're, you're, your compassion's running dry. You, you know, you decrease your empathy and sympathy for those problems and situations. You're more cynical. Um, you'll start thinking people never change. Behavior um, is attention-seeking, manipulative, or just being lazy. Um, yeah, low frustration tolerance, and you're more irritable. People bringing up their problems. It's, <laughs> you know, you just don't got, you don't want to, you don't want to hear about all that. So it's just, uh, you don't have much tolerance. Uh, you lose hope and change in what you're doing. It looks pointless. What's the point of trying? Um, impacts how you interact with others. You know, my example was Judge Judy. I don't think Judge, Ju Judge Judy has compassion fatigue. Uh, I really like uh, Judge Judy, but you know how she, like, when she's sitting up there and people are talking about their problems and she's like, you know, be, be, be more responsible. Deal with it. You know, <laughs> you know it's just like she's really direct. Um, but she's not very, I think, sympathetic or empathetic. It's just much more, you know, grow up, get, be responsible, you know, do what you need to do, kind of thing. And uh, um, but you know, in the helping field, we can't. I can't be that way. Sometimes I want to, but I can't. I can't always be that way. So, uh, but I, with compassion for you, you will. You know, you, you just don't. You don't want to hear it anymore. You're done. I'm tired. I'm. I'm. I'm you know, turning you off. <laughs> Don't deal with your problems on your own. So managing CF, there's a lot more online I'd recommend. If you think you have compassion fatigue, um, look on the line. Uh, but pursue your goals again. Go back to number one, number two. Find meaning. Take care of yourself. Take breaks, vacations. Uh, seek out therapy, EAP therapy. Um, but you want to take care of it because, again, it grows. Right? And it will affect your work. And uh, you don't want that to happen. Uh, some some questions I have down at the bottom. Are you working harder than your client? Uh, who is responsible for the client's outcome? I think these are two questions that, you know, depending on how you answer, it may lead to compassion fatigue. You know, if you're working harder than your client, then I think it's going to, you, you're going to get fatigued from that. Again, you're going to, um, you know, you know, overwork yourself. And who's responsible for the client's outcome? And if you're a surgeon, I mean, I think you are, but uh, like a like a therapist, you you don't want to put that responsibility all on your shoulders. You know, I think most of it has to go on the clients. You know, you, you're responsible for providing uh, treatment and you know uh, evidence based treatment to help them kind of lead them to what they need to do, the changes they need to make, um, lifestyle changes. Um, but again, like if they don't succeed, you, know, you can't bear the weight of all that responsibility. You know, with therapy, a lot of the responsibility is on clients. Okay. Self-awareness is important. Uh, know your limits and boundaries. Don't become overworked and burn, uh, buried in more debt, uh, more debt, more work, I guess, debt too, than you can manage. Get more comfortable with saying no. Um, don't stuff or bury negative feelings and emotions about the job. And the next point, and more focus on reaction, I think a lot of people don't want to talk to supervisor or, or like their HR rep um, because they're focused on their reaction, okay? I don't want them mad at me or I don't want them to fire me. I don't want um, these bad things to happen to me if I voice my, my feelings and emotions about something. Um, but you're really doing yourself a disservice because, um, you know, burnout can affect your performance. Okay. Uh, at least if you go to your supervisor and, you know, communicate your feelings and emotions, at least you get it out. You know, at least you're verbalizing it. You're getting out of you, getting out of yourself. Um, you can't control how they react, but if you don't, if you stuff it and you, you bury it inside, it's going to affect your performance. And that's going to affect your job uh, quality uh, of your work. And you may get fired. And, and then uh, now, now you're feeling, you know, you still have those feelings inside, and now you don't have a job. And then on your interview for your next job, they're going to ask you what happened. You know, it's going to affect uh, whether or not they hire you. Um, so be aware 
uh, about the thoughts um, on how supervisors are going to react if you express your feelings. Do it in a, do it in a polite way. <laughs> do it, be respectable. Um, but again, I, it, it, don't stuff or bury them. If you have to go to a therapist, maybe yeah, you'll know for for a fact if I say something, man, they're gonna they're gonna black mark me, and you know my performance evaluations are gonna be negative. Seek outside help. You know, go to a therapist. <laughs> go go to the gym and and you know get get some of that energy emotion out of you. Um, so, but make sure you're not stuffing or burying. You got to get that stuff out. Um, Again, uh, next uh, point says, we'll come out eventually. Yeah, it'll come out eventually. It'll come out in your work. It'll come out in with your in a, like an interaction. It'll come out eventually. Feelings and emotions need to be expressed. Nothing will change on its own and may even stay the same. Okay. So if you express emotions or feelings by being defiant or having an attitude, it's not going to change anything. Your supervisor is not going to say, oh, man, they got, a, they got a bad attitude towards it. Man, I better be nice to them. No, they're do that you know, again burnout is your responsibility you know compassion fatigue is your responsibility making things better or the way you want them to be is your responsibility um, avoid gossiping or complaining to co-workers uh, this is a passive way of getting it out um, and, and this uh, this is a I think an easy one a lot of people kind of get caught up in um, like I said Burnout can spread, and somebody may report you for gossiping or complaining, um, or maybe the manager overhears you. You know, again, it's not it's not effective, okay? And you're not helping yourself or your teammates out by doing it. Know when it's time to leave. Be aware when it's when it's time to leave. If you are at the end of your rope, if you have nothing left, if you if you met your goals and you not growing anymore no one is time to leave you know and and know the circumstances of why you left so you don't repeat that what are your options always have options right? always have options you don't want to get stuck in a job you hate okay number five have outside interests and hobbies you want to add this to your daily routine and it, um, it needs to be done every day okay and I put a, a link to a YouTube video I did you can click on that and that will give you a lot of uh, good information on how to, um, you know, ha not how to have a hobby, but, you know, what's a good hobby, all right? Something that you need. You know, it can't just be coming home and plopping down in front of the PlayStation and, you know, playing the whole night of games. So check that video out next after you're done watching this one. Number six, be grateful. This is a tough slide. Like, I, I think I'm going to get a lot of, I don't know, negative reaction towards it um, because it's not a long-term coping strategy. This is a very short term. If you just need to make it through your internship or you're, you're applying for jobs and you just, you're, you're, you just need something to get you through that day, list three things that you're grateful for. Okay, this is a last resort technique. Uh, it's not something that you can do uh, long-term. And this will help change your perspective and set you on a more positive cognitive path. Um, because, it, you know, there's always somebody who's worse off than you, right? So there are things to be grateful for. Um, but just know that this isn't for me. I'm more looking for a new job. I just need to get through, okay? Um, so, yeah, like I said, this will get you through the day, short term, but should not be used long term. All right? If you're, if you're sitting in your car before work thinking of things to be grateful for, you're, you're at the end of your rope. You know, um, you either need to move on or make some serious changes. And lastly, have fun. And, and I'm not trying to, uh, I don't know, antagonize people. or, But, but find an enjoyment in the work that you're doing, okay? What changes uh, can you make to your schedule or work environment that will make it more enjoyable? Okay, bring in your own personality. Be realistic and follow the rules, all right? Have fun, but don't get fired for it. Uh, it can't be something you do on special occasions. It has to be an everyday thing, okay? It can't be that once a week chili cook-off or something. You know how some companies do, like, uh, try to raise, like, morale, morale by doing special things. It has to be something you do every day. It has to be around you every day, okay? Bonus, if you do groups, um, 
I know groups are very easy to burn out on. Um, some some ways that I've found to, that'd be helpful uh, is choose topics that you're passionate about. Uh, topic or mod modality. Um, if you're doing a relapse prevention plan uh, group, you know what's your modality? What do you want to learn about? You know you'll learn a lot about that modality by doing groups. Uh, make your own handouts and slides. Use evidence-based techniques, of course. Don't don't be like just putting together something and and not having the research to back it up. And, and you want to create create your own lesson plan. You know, begin with five groups. That's five weeks. You know, if it doesn't do so well, what can I uh, change on that on that lesson plan? Uh, and you can grow and uh, in your field by doing these things. Okay. Final thoughts. Your job, supervisor, coworkers are not going to change. You have to make the changes in yourself. Your job should not should be a complement to your life. Okay, it should be a win-win for each party. Um, and you know they they get an asset. You know you're doing your position like you should, but also what are you getting out of it? All right, it can't just be one-sided. Uh, focus on what the job can do for you and for your goals. Don't work to make your boss happy. Work to make yourself happy. All right. So that's avoiding burnout. Um, it's a big problem, especially in the mental health field. Um, and you know, I hope that helped. Uh, I worked, uh, I worked nine years in inpatient psych, and and I, I had experienced a lot of burnout. And these are some of the ways that I helped that helped me uh, get through all those years. Um, I think mental health, in general, uh, the field. Uh, I don't want to say needs to needs something needs something to happen uh, because the workers aren't protected. You know, social workers, the, the case managers. Um, you know, they they get um, they get uh, so much put on them, and so much stress. And I don't know, like uh, they're not really like protected from anything, you know. They burn out, they quit, and they just get replaced by a 22-year-old fresh out of college. So it's, it's, I don't know. I like I don't want to lobby <laughs> for a union, but uh, uh, man, I, I just I see the abuse that some of these agencies, um, I guess, have on their employees, and it's just something needs to happen. Um, because it is a, it is a, I mean, due to the shutdown, we can see that this is a, um, a necessary job. You know, it's a necessary um, work uh, field. Okay. Um, so I hope that helped. Again, I would, uh, you know, if you have any questions, comments, uh, please leave them. Uh, but I hope that that gave you some idea of what to do. Really start getting a pen and paper out and start writing your goals down. And make sure that you're getting something out of it besides money. Um, okay, but uh, yeah, hang in there. It gets better. Just keep keep growing. Keep educating yourself. Get those degrees. Get those certificates. Get those licenses. And uh, do what you want to do. Okay, it's a it's it's it, it's definitely worth it once you get to that level. Okay, so I thank you for your time. Uh, please like and subscribe. I would appreciate it. Um, but uh, you have a wonderful day, and uh, keep up the hard work, everybody. Thanks. Bye.